Uh, so first of all, let me thank you for being here. I was pretty convinced nobody would show up at 6.20, 20 minutes before free beers. So excited to see at least a few people in the room. Uh, my name is Julien, I'm one of the co-founders at Argen. And actually I wanted to take the opportunity of this second StarkNet CC to kind of reflect on you know, our StarkNet journey. Why did we end up being on StarkNet, where we are today, and uh, where we are going. And so as some of you probably know, Arjun, we started on L1, right, with really the mission to make crypto accessible to all. Uh, and for that, we built the first smart contract wallet on Ethereum, and we came with you know, innovative concepts such as social recovery, fraud monitoring, sponsored transaction, and so on. And actually, that was a very good model. I think users loved us for a couple of years until 2020, and, and gas became kind of crazy. Uh, and, and at that moment, we realized that Ethereum was probably not the right home for us, that we would never be able to deliver on a mission to onboard billions of users to that technology. And so we started looking around and, and trying to figure out what would be our, you know, our, our next home. And for that, we identified two criteria that we believe were important. We wanted a place where you know, the protocol would scale, so we could really onboard a lot of users give them cheap transaction, but maintaining you know, the, the securities and, and the guarantees of Ethereum. But we also knew that we needed a place where you could scale the UX of cell custody, because we wanted to build on our vision to make crypto simple. And so for that, we realized that we needed account abstraction. And I'm sorry, Martin, I'll try not to say account abstraction too much, but I'll still make it, mention it a few times. And so we, we, knew, we knew that we needed these two combinations, scaling the throughput and scaling the UX of cell custody. And of course, talking to diff the different layer twos, we were convinced that StarkNet was actually probably the right one and that they would deliver uh, and give us what we needed. And so I remember I, start, I started engaging in, in the community at that time. I think that's, I was looking at my Discord and I found this this message from October 2021, where I was actually interacting with uh, Francesco, which was in the room earlier, but I guess he left. Uh, and what I realized is that the ecosystem was actually amazing. There were so many smart people, a lot of exciting stuff and uh, exciting discussion, but I also realized that nobody really knew at that point you know, how to build accounts and wallets, and that was kind of a blank page that needed to be, to be solved. And so at first I started discussing because people wanted to reproduce the DYDX model that people were using on StarkX and that wouldn't have worked on, on StarkNet. So I started engaged and then at some point I was like, actually this is an opportunity, you know, at, it, maybe it's time that we start delivering on that vision and, and do something on StarkNet. And so I basically asked my two co-founders, can I hack the only front-end engineer that we had in the company at that time, Yannick, and we basically decided to actually build the first wallet. And so we managed to do that in six weeks, but honestly most of the credit goes to to Yannick. And so that's why we started, and that's how we started ArgenX, the very first wallet on, on StarkNet. And I remember my excitement the day we deployed the first account and did the first transaction. And so a little bit of chilling, but I mean, ArgenX is the number one wallet on StarkNet today. Amazingly, we have like 1.5, you know, download of our extension, which I think in Web3 is an amazing number. We have something like, I mean, this is probably already updated, but between uh, 150k and 900k funded accounts, so users who have actually put funds on ArgenX. We have around 38 to 40 million uh, of assets, and we have roughly 70% market share. And I will stop chaining. But so I guess, I mean, probably seven out of 10 people in this room know ArgenX or are using ArgenX based on these, these statistics. But some of the stuff that we are still doing because we still want to push the boundaries of what we can do, of course, with the wallet. And so I wanted to highlight some of the features that are coming, which I think are kind of cool, or partly there, but that we are improving. One is the idea of transaction review. We really want to help users understand the actions that they are doing and basically try to provide them as much context as possible. So today we simulate the transaction and try to tell the user exactly what is going to, to happen. And something that is coming is that we are also about to, we are flagging potential risk. This, this is something that we already do, but we are actually refreshing the, the UI. And the idea is really to tell user if there is something potentially risky, to tell them exactly why we have flagged that, what's the risk that they are having, and maybe a recommended a pass for action. And so this transaction review is about to be updated, and I think that's kind of cool. 
Something that we have actually we have also launched recently, not that many people know it yet because we kind of keep it keep it low key in the application, but is the, this concept of Argent Shield. The idea is to really help secure the account, leveraging account abstraction. That's twice that I said. Uh, and so today we basically use a two FA challenge when you. Uh, you move device with your Argent X. So basically what that means is that for some whatever reason someone steals your seed phrase, if you have enabled Argent X, even if they have the seed phrase and they go to another computer, they won't be able to interact uh, and to use the funds on your account. And I think that's kind of cool. It's the first time that you can actually get your seed phrase compromised and still not lose access to your funds. And the next, I would say the next version of Argent Shield will be really protecting you on high risk transactions. So uh, asking you for a 2FA challenge, for example, if you are sending 70% of your asset to an address that you've never interacted with. That may be suspicious, and so the wallet will just ask you to confirm who you are. And this is a true AA feature, uh, because this really happened at the level of the account. The way it works is that on your account there's a second key that we give to a service, or, or Argent Shield service, and every time there is a transaction, the service will basically inspect the transaction, and the service is required to co-sign every transaction. So if that fraud monitoring service detects that the transaction may be risky, it will give you a 2FA challenge. If the transaction is secure, it will automatically co-sign, and the transaction goes through. So that's actually a simple UX flow that we are used to, but again, we are leveraging the power of, of StackNet to make that happen. And finally, what I think is a great news, is that we have rewritten our account in Cairo 1 compiler v2. Okay, Cairo. That's the running joke of the day, but we still refer it as Cairo 1 compiler v2. So it has been rewritten and it has been audited by consensus diligence. And I think that's exciting because it's probably one of the first Cairo 1 a contract being audited. Okay, that was for Argen X. Something that we've actually, we have announced at Tel Aviv uh, a few months ago, but it is gradually coming to reality, is the Argent Multisig, because Argent X today is really helping individual users. We also want to help teams, you know, be basically build on StarkNet. There will be more and more liquidity, and so projects will need a secure way to manage that liquidity. And so we've been working on building a Multisig. What I personally like is that this multisig is fully integrated in Argent X, so it's not a separate product. As a user, you really see the list of accounts that you have. And some of these accounts, there are individual accounts, Argent X account, and some of these accounts will be multisig. And so you clearly see what you have on your, on your wallet. You can, of course, create a multisig or join in a, a multisig. Everything is done through the Argent X UX which is nice. You can, of course, configure your multisig, so invite people to join, remove people, configure the threshold. When something happens, you are notified in Argent so that's actually a good way to know that you're supposed to confirm a transaction, and we've tried to make a, a confirmation screen as, as friendly as possible, so you exactly know what you are doing, why you are doing it, and who from the multisig, how many signers have already confirmed the transaction. And again, like our normal Argent account, the contracts have been written in Cairo, underlying Cairo 1 compiler v2, and they've been audited by consensus. And again, this is a true AA multisig, which personally I find exciting. So this is not the model that we have on Ethereum, where the multisig is actually a normal contract and someone has to pay for the transaction. Here, the account itself, the multisig is really an account in the definition of StarkNet, which means that it can pay for its own transaction. Okay. Something else that we have uh, recently released, uh, actually it's been live as of last week, I think, we haven't really announced it yet, is the Argent Web Wallet. The idea of the Web Wallet, again, is to help the StarkNet ecosystem grow, right? We have product for different types of users, Multisig for team, Argent X, which I think is really good for developers, but we also wanted to have a solution that's appealing for, I would say, more normal users. And so we've been working on reproducing a web 2 like experience, but again, for through Web3 Wallet with self-custody. And so with our, our web wallet, basically user, I mean, you, users don't need to install anything, right? They can go on the app they want to use and they can sign in and connect using an email and a password. There's no seed phrase, it's the Argent model. There's an integrated on-ramp, and what's really cool is that this is a true Web3 wallet in the sense that you can take it to some other dApps. So all the dApps that have 
that are supporting web wallet, you can basically connect to one and you can port that session and connect to another one. And of course, there's the full Argen model underlying it with uh, recovery and 2FA or Argent Shield by default. And again, I think that was for me probably the, the missing piece for these types of, of product. People have tried to make onboarded wallets before, but actually if you do that with an EOA, there's always some form of, of custody or there's always a lot of risk uh, by design, but using actually account abstraction and having this, two, uh, this fraud monitoring service, I think it's the first time that you can build such a product in a secure, truly censorship resistant and, and self-custodial way. And because this is a conference for developers, if you want to use that in your DAP, first of all, come talk to Ismail, which is sitting there. Uh, but basically, it's just a one line of code that you need to change in your DAP. So very, very easy to integrate. You can configure it the way you want, depending on which type of users you are targeting. You see that on the right, if you really want purely web to users, you can just show the login with email. You can be completely neutral, and it comes as a normal wallet with Argenx and Bravos, or you can put the email a bit more prominent if you want. Basically, you are in control, depending on who you want to attract to your DAP. And as I mentioned, it's been already live on Brick, Starknet ID, Carbonable, Avenue, and of course, of Trim that we announced today. And I think there's a few more DAPs that are coming. So if you're building a DAP and that's something that you find interesting, please come talk to us. We would love to help you on board. <laughs> And finally, something that I'm also very excited is that it's been a long time coming, but we do feel that the, the technology is now mature for us to build really the vision of Argen and come resume our, our, our true vision and bring the original Argen experience, meaning supporting StackNet on mobile. This is actually something that I've, been, I've had that on my phone for a while, but we're waiting for 0 0.12 to be released because we didn't want to onboard users to a mobile application while the network was not ready. But now that the network is ready, it's a matter of a few weeks until we will release that. And I think that's very exciting. For those of you who know Argent on mobile, it's really the normal Argent experience. You can send and receive NFTs. You can on-ramp directly. You can see your flashy NFTs, which is really cool. And you have Argent Shield by default. So again, the full Argent security, but also the full Argent vision with a very simple to use mobile wallet. And something that we are hiding in that mobile wallet that we never did actually on L1 is that we have a, a, a browser in a browser. So the idea is to really help users navigate the ecosystem and discover the great StarkNet ecosystem. And that was it. Thank you.